What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about the death of flexible dieting. This week's topic comes up because there was a study done uh, last year that looked at comparing a high quality diet versus a low quality diet with calories equated and looking at its effects on fat loss and a few different health markers. So first off, kudos, really cool study, Really cool randomized control trial. I think they got a lot of it right in terms of matching calorie intake. That's super important. Like if we're gonna test, hey, is one thing better than another thing straight up, we gotta match calories. And so many studies don't do that. So kudos to the researchers for controlling that major variable. So they wanted to find out over the course of 12 weeks, what would happen if they put people on the same calories, but a low quality diet versus a high quality diet in about 100 people. When they say low quality versus high quality, we have to define those because what one person considers low quality, other people will consider high quality and vice versa. Because if you talk to carnivore crazies, like vegetables and seed oils would be low quality, whereas saturated fat and any animal products would be high quality. So let's put this in perspective. Low quality was higher amounts of sugar, lower dietary fiber, less plant protein, less polyunsaturated fats, less monounsaturated fats, and more saturated fat. That was the, the major differences. So whereas the higher quality diet had more polyunsaturated fats, more monounsaturated fats, more omega-3 fats, more fiber, more protein. So protein was not matched between these two diets, which I'm gonna get back to later, but they both had the same amount of animal protein. The difference in protein was from plant protein. So the high quality diet had a greater amount of plant protein versus the low quality diet. And then the high quality diet also had more dietary fiber. What do they find over the course of 12 weeks? Well. Interestingly, the group on the high quality diet lost more body weight and a little bit more body fat, and they also lost uh, more visceral fat, which is important because visceral fat seems to be more associated with negative metabolic outcomes compared to subcutaneous fat. This led a lot of people to overreact and say, well, this shows that flexible dieting is the wrong way to do things. Well, I think it depends on who's talking about flexible dieting. If you look at my videos on flexible dieting, I've always said, you know, flexible dieting within one sanity, not just protein shakes and Skittles, okay? And also getting enough dietary fiber. Now, why is dietary fiber important? And also, why was it important that protein be equated between studies? Well, both dietary fiber and protein can increase what's called diet-induced thermogenesis. That is the amount of calories it takes to extract energy from the food you eat both protein and fiber take a greater amount of energy to extract those nutrients than say normal carbohydrate or fat. That is probably the most likely reason why these two diets saw differences in weight loss. And I think the fiber was about 50% different. I think the protein was about 50% different as well with the high quality group getting more protein and more fiber. Now, again, I'm not saying that this study isn't a valid study. Again, for the question they're trying to answer, which is in our view of what makes a high quality diet, which is more protein from plants, which is what they used, and more fiber, we saw better results. So it's still a valid study, but it, it's not the death of flexible dieting in terms of how I've promoted flexible dieting, which is, hey, sure, kind of eat what you need to hit these numbers, but hey, dietary fiber is really important. And I'd probably also make the caveat that uh, limiting your saturated fat is important in terms of uh, LDL cholesterol and reducing your risk of cardiovascular disease and getting enough omega-3 fatty acids is also pretty important. Now, what did they see in terms of health markers? They saw that in terms of like area under the curve of glucose and insulin, those sorts of things, they didn't really see difference between groups. Both groups had modest improvements in their insulin sensitivity. Uh, they didn't see any difference in HbA1c. They did see a greater reduction in triglycerides and in cholesterol with the high quality diet. Just another check mark in the corner for dietary fiber, higher protein, and lower saturated fat. So none of this stuff that they found in the study really surprises me based on the differences in dietary treatments. I will say it's hard to separate out the better improvement in triglycerides, visceral fat, cholesterol from the differences in weight loss. It could be that if somehow the lower quality diet produced the same weight loss, like let's say if you did equate protein and fiber, you would likely see the same weight loss. It's possible that like triglycerides and cholesterol then wouldn't have been any different because weight loss itself 
has a major effect on these different biomarkers. I will say that their study does provide support that their version of a high quality diet seems to improve these blood markers a little bit more, but that may simply be because it caused greater amounts of fat loss. It may not be that there's anything specific to that diet that actually caused these greater improvements in those different biomarkers. It's possible, but we can't separate that because of the difference in weight loss. And so that's a really important thing to understand because when you talk about like independent factors, it means it affects this in absence of any other changes anywhere. So when you do have differences in weight loss, again, that's not a knock. Uh, that's another check mark in the corner of higher protein and higher fiber, but it just means that it may not be anything magic to that diet itself necessarily, Rather, it's just that it had a greater effect on weight loss. Now, it might not be. I'm not ready to stretch out that limb because we have seen studies where weight changes are the same, but there's differences in biomarkers, especially if we see this with like LDL cholesterol and saturated fat intake. It's pretty well known that even at the same body weight or same body weight changes that if you swap out saturated fat for monounsaturated fat or polyunsaturated fat, that you get a better improvement in LDL cholesterol. So that's one example of things. But again, I don't think that this means that flexible dieting is no longer an option and, and you know off the table or, or suboptimal or anything like that. At the end of the day, the most important thing is if you are overweight or obese is reducing your adiposity. And in this study, again, even the low quality diet group saw significant improvements in their biomarkers. So both groups improved, it's just that the high quality diet improved a little bit more. So again, I think it's really important to emphasize that because otherwise people think, well, I could just never have sugar again in my life if I ever wanna lose weight and improve my health. No, you, you can. It might be a little bit better if you could trade out some of that sugar for fiber, but if just because you have some sugar doesn't mean that you can't have these improvements. So again, I'm not advocating for high sugar intake or anything like that. I'm just advocating for people to not get whacked out over this stuff and think they gotta be perfect. The biggest thing is simply reducing your adiposity. Once you have that in check and you're actually adherent to a diet, if you can add more fiber, more polyunsaturated fats, more monounsaturated fats, more omega-3s, and even more dietary fiber, fantastic. But adherence comes first. Guys, if you like study breakdowns like this, we actually broke down this study in depth in my new research review, REPS, which is Research Explained with Practical Summaries. What I love about REPS is when you sign up for it, every month we review five studies in fitness and nutrition and break them down in a way that's palatable and easy for you, the reader, to understand. Not only that, we're gonna give you practical recommendations on what to do with your diet and your training based off of these research studies, and we're gonna put that in context of what the overall consensus of the data says, not just that singular study, and we will tell you what we think the study limitations are and whether or not we even agree or disagree with the author's conclusions, which is super important. You get all that for $12.99 a month and you get access to all our back issues of reps. You get every issue we've done so far. If you're looking to sign up to reps, click the link in the description. I think you'll love it and I'll catch you next week.